What's up, YouTube? Episode 60, I mean, 72. No. Uh, Darren's here. Uh, Jamie's back there. Sam is back there. Etiana's right here. We're all here. Adina's right here. And I'm right here. COVID. Um, <laughs> no, it's, please stop. COVID Don't. is back. Okay. COVID? Like, Anyways, back. episode 72 has nothing to do with huh? COVID. Can they see me? Um, no, probably not. Can they see Darren? They can't. Do you want them to? Come on, front and center, Darren. You're you the go. star of the show. There. <laughs> All right, so oh, we gotta go right here, guys. Episode seventy-two, about to hit record on the podcast. Three, two, two. Sorry. Oh, that's good. Everybody, welcome back to the Made for More Consulting Podcast. Mario here with Adina. We have her husband Darren here. He is sitting in the corner. If you guys are watching on YouTube, Etiana's on the floor. Jamie's back there, <laughs> along with Sam. So, welcome back, episode seventy-two, Made for More podcast, um, where we add value to people's lives as a leader. Or if you're not a leader, we're everyone's a leader. Mario. There you go. Everyone's a That's leader. That's exactly what Adina says. So, why do we do this podcast to help you grow as a leader, so that in turn you can help those around you and. You cannot give what you don't have. What does that mean, Adina? <laughs> I'm just reading what you wrote. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Not what I would have said. Well, what, what does that mean, then? Well, you as know, a as a leader, you can't, pour you can't, you can't pour into somebody what you don't have. You can't exactly. give that. But That's you faking. have to. Yeah. And okay. don't do the whole fake it till you make it because that's bull crap as a leader. Anyways, that's, welcome. That we should do a podcast <laughs> on bad leadership advice. Like Take what we said last time, remember the whole, hey, I'll pray for you, the, yeah. uh, the <laughs> things Christians shouldn't say when someone yes. passes away. Yes. So tonight, um, episode 72, thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, go back and listen to episode 65. We do have some uh, some news to start off with as far as um, switching some things around because Adina brought it to my attention because I'll be out of town for a couple weeks. But we are not starting um, the leader within 2.0 because... We're not going to be around for right four because weeks. you were going. To, we were going to do one week and then you were going to be gone in like two or three weeks. Yeah. We were going or we're going to do two weeks and then break. It right. Back, so. And so yeah, we just decided we would do this standalone, and then you're going to have some special episodes yeah, over actually, the next couple of weeks. I think actually we need one more standalone next week. Yeah. I did the math wrong, but okay. either way, tonight is going to be about something different. So uh, one of the reasons that I, I know I've been silent on social media as far as made for more and on. Just some of the things that we're going through here is I'm wrapping up 14 years at the church, stepping away, so uh, wrapping up my job, and uh, we'll pick back up with the leader within 2.0. On Maybe you June should 19. let me interview you about your last 14 years yes. as a next church week? leader next week. As a church leader, yeah. So we're gonna Specifically, go as yeah, I mean, like as a well, as a leader, leading from a church is a little bit different, but it also has the same context. I mean, you can. It, it still spills over into business. It's just like when we did the burnout book. Yeah, you know, we can do that next week. Great. Leading from yeah. Oh, what yeah. Was it, well, I mean, years? yes, and how we can talk about how you left well. I mean, there, it's there's a lot behind that. Yeah, there is. So tonight, though, it's a one-off, and it's probably one of the most important uh, topics, if not the most important. I would think this goes hand in hand with communication, but we're going over tonight. What we're going over tonight is the five-letter word trust. There you go. Trust. And I will tell you that Stephanie Cranky was listening to her own episode. Oh, good. And she texted me and she said, hey, oh, no, actually, she was listening to last week's. And she said, hey, yeah, you, you guys really need to go over, you know, do something over trust. So. Good, good. Well, we talked about, last week we talked about empower and equipping, and we we brought up <laughs> trust. No, I brought times. it up. I just yeah. said, Adina, do you have trust issues? And I said, yes, I do. There you go. <laughs> trust issues. <laughs> and now you're going to totally call me out. I see that's coming. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and read the first question. Yes, Adina, why do you have trust issues? Well, listen, I have trust issues because oftentimes trust issues are connected to <laughs> negative experiences in the past. I had to Google it. I don't know. Why, why does somebody have trust issues? I you don't tell know. me. I mean, tell I me. Know. Know. I, I really don't know if I do. Do I have trust <laughs> issues? I think you do. I, okay. But well, maybe you, you should tell us why you I have trust issues. You said it last week. You said it last week, so. I don't think um, in my job, though. I think it's more relationships. And I think it's because when I was growing Darren, up. <laughs> you know, <it's> <laughs> so you might want to be careful. You've been mm-hmm. called out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. That's why he's here. Um, I think when I was growing up, we moved every two years. And so what I think it was is I've never built, like, strong, stable relationships. And so just about the time you would build that relationship, it'd be time to move on. 
And that was back in the day when you really you couldn't keep up with people. Yeah, you know, you, or anything like. So tell me right. why, why would y'all move? That's oh my dad, it's just my dad's job. Was he in the hole? No, he well no, he worked for Albertsons. And I worked for H or no, yeah, I think for H E B now. Nice. Albertsons. Yeah, yeah back in Remember the day. Safeway? Safeway? Yeah. Yeah. Pig Wiggly, I mean, I don't know. Know. <laughs> I do not. Now. That's, that's a little <laughs> neat. So, um, so you guys moved around. Jamie actually moved around a long time too. I mean, almost all the time. So, um, I mean, I guess that could build trust issues. But tonight, I think whether you're listening and you're, you know, deciphering this or siphoning, siphoning this through a relationship, um, you know, relationship category, a leadership category, or an employee category, I think it right. can, uh, or parenting. Right. But I think realistically, a lot of times, whether it's personal or in, like, at work, it comes when there's an ex, there's a gap in the expectation and what's reality, you know? Yeah. And anytime you have that gap, it allows for <clears throat> a breakdown of trust. Yeah. So, <clears throat> with what you're saying about the, re- the reality and expectation, we're listening to a book my wife started today, but I've been listening to it for a while. And he's from a doctor. And uh, again, he said Americans are dying at an alarming rate because of loneliness. And most loneliness is caused because of anxiety and depression. And depression and anxiety are led from loneliness, but it's their lack of, their, their expectation and reality. There's a, there's a gap in that. So they don't trust right. what's about to happen. They don't trust anyone. So then they seclude isolate. themselves and isolate and when they're building this false sense of stories in their in their head mm-hmm. and before you know it again you have obesity you have heart attacks you have all this stuff right. that lead from well and all of that comes from like a lack of willingness to be vulnerable you know which I mean, is right which one is, of the reasons people don't trust absolutely it's the cycle yeah so, so as a leader i think we'll be talking about vulnerability but for me i i don't know how you want to start but i just put trust killers like if you're in a relationship, if you're a leader, if you're an employee, um, if you're a parent. Um, so I think we should start with why trust is important on a team. Yeah. Like just a couple of sentences about why is that important? Because I think that if, if you're a business owner and you've got a couple of employees working for you or you've got three or four people on your team, I think it's really easy not to think about the importance of trust. Yeah. So why right. is it important? Last night I did this, thinking about this, I did this, uh, this freaking exercise. I got a sheet of paper. <clears throat> I wrote all the team names at the top. And on the left hand side, I put people that have built somewhat of, of a uh, unity. And the people on the right are in it for themselves. <clears throat> and the left side outdid the right side. But the right side was more, more of the influencers, which means there's this gap in trust from the left and the right side, which it's not going to exist. So for me, when you have the trust, it's the shield, right? It's the gladi- the, the 300 shield. It's not for me. The shield's not for me. It's for my brothers on the right and the left. So if you have somebody in circle of safety, if you have somebody in a circle of safety just holding their shield for themselves, their back is exposed. Yeah. So for me, trust is important in an organization because if you can't do that, then you don't have teamwork. And at some point, the gap is going to be where, hey, the uh, competitor has beat us because we can't work together. The... Um, uh, or hey, there's a, a snitch or there's a mole in our organization and they're hurting us rather than helping us. So um, yesterday, my cousin, I can't tell you who he works for, but it's one of the number one organizations in the world as far as cars go. And there's four teams at this place, at this plant, and his team, uh, everybody was told, hey, you can't have overtime. But his team, the, the boss came up and said, hey, you, you guys, I'm not talking to you guys. And this is what he said, I trust you guys because you guys all work together. The other three teams are riding the clock. They're not doing anything, and I'm having to watch them. Trust builds, I mean, honesty builds trust. All those things build trust, but it's about the team. It's not about an individual, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, yeah, what, that's what would you say? Well, I mean, I think that, like, it's kind of what you said, I think, is that trust enables everybody to, like, reach their full potential and take the team further. Yeah. You know, because if you don't trust, then you're not giving your all. Yeah. And I keep thinking through, if someone's listening, and I get guarantee someone's listening, whether they're on a team, and maybe they're one of the leaders, and they're trying to build unity back into the team that maybe has some gaps. I'm just going, today, before we go, I want to make sure that we say something that goes, you, yeah, I think it's one-on-ones. It's like, okay, if I'm that leader that is over all these people, I need to have one-on-ones to go, are you in or are you off, man? Because I can't have you guys having this 
whatever between y'all two, and then I'm going to meet with this person, this person, and I'm going to bring everybody together, going, we've got to move forward. Okay, so, but as a leader, because we've been in those situations where, you know, somebody said, like, are, are you in? Like, we're, yeah. we're changing directions, is everybody mm -hmm. in? And people say, oh, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. But then their actions don't match that. That kills the trust on the team. And as a leader, you have to be willing to call that out. As a leader, you also got to be able to empower those people mm -hmm. and give them a job. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're right. I, I think that there's there's that dichotomy because if someone is saying, "Hey, I'm on the team. This is my role," but they're never given empowerment, there's a gap again. So, yeah, that's tough. That's really tough. So, trust killers. Lack of communication. <laughs> Lack of communication, I think, is number one. Um, people, and we say this all the time. People are down <laughs> on what they're not up on. So, if you have a gap of communication in your organization there's gonna be a lack of trust. Um, I think all the way from products, Adina, to even promotions of people. If you promote someone and no one knows, and they walk in and say, hey, they told you what to do, who are you to tell me what to do? Oh, you didn't hear it, they promoted me. Or hey, you didn't hear this product is on sale. Right, yeah. well I think it also comes from when you don't share the why with people, when you just tell them to do something. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you don't share like, why are we doing this? Why are we going this direction? Why are we? Yeah whatever it is, um, people don't understand, yeah. and they don't want to be dictated to, and yeah. it's a lack of communication. Yeah, what, um, oh, and you know, recently, Jocko's been doing these, these um, small videos and his podcast about trust, <clears throat> and he keeps saying over and over and over and over and over again that people do not want to be, um, they don't want things shoved down their throat as far as information or anything else. He said, so why are you trying to do that as a leader if it's not gonna work well? And I, it never has. Yeah, I just watched one of his videos, like, all, like, all the, the way over bat. here. Yes, and, uh, yeah, and I was like, what is new, that? He has a new baseball bat and it says discipline on it or something. Right, but I, whatever, whenever I watched that video, I actually thought about this, yeah. you know, because we can talk about it in a minute, but yeah. Yeah, and I think that as far as communication, if the leader's the one that holds the key to everything, and you pick and choose who you tell your information to, yeah. you're gonna be in trouble. Well, one of the things that I have seen is whenever a leader withholds information with that, whenever they say like, um, hey, we're gonna do this, and they know what the next step is, or they the next few steps, mm -hmm. but they just, they don't tell anybody that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that can, that's really hard. That is, is really hard. Yeah, because as a teammate, like if you're my leader and you did that to me, and sometimes you leave those meetings and you might go, well then what's the next step or what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And then again, you're holding all the communication. So then I feel at some point going, I'm just waiting for Dina to tell me what to do. So yeah. does she trust me? Does she want me to do this? Does she, is she gonna, is she waiting for me to do something? So. And I think that comes from when a leader feels like they have to know everything. I think it's okay as a leader to say, this is, this is what we're doing, but we haven't got the next couple steps figured yeah, out. That's yeah. totally different. Just Definitely. communicate. Yep. Even when you don't know what you know, communicate. So. Uh, trust killers by communication number two micromanagement oh boy if yeah. you want something done right you have to do it yourself that is the worst statement to say as a leader I think so too yeah I think that <clears throat> I was in a not I think I was in a meeting with Adina I'm gonna put her on the spot Go ahead. a few weeks ago yeah and um, I kept watching you and uh -huh. things were being said things were being said they kept asking you questions mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I started chuckling so everybody looked at me and then I looked at you and you just said out loud that micromanagement in this in this meeting is killing me. And you were just <laughs> don't micromanage me. Don't micromanage you because what does it do? Yes. It, it, it's putting and especially in a group setting, mm -hmm. don't ever do that because what it does is it lets your team know that you don't trust your peer. Yes. And your peers start to go, Whoa, I'm not gonna speak up. I'm not yep. gonna do it because look, I'm or else the next project, I'm not gonna take this on because look what they're doing to Dina, who's a great yep. leader. You just don't trust her or the appearances you don't trust. Have a conversation outside and then in, in right. one on one. Don't put it in front of a freaking group of people. Right. So micromanagement, though, again, is it, it removes the team mentality and it's all about the leader. For sure. Well, and I think that that is one of those things that it, micromanagement is probably, in my opinion, like the number one thing for lack of trust because it, it perpetuates that idea of I'm not going to do, as a, as a team member, I'm not going to do anything until my leader tells me to. Mm -hmm. Because I know that no matter what I do, it's not really going to be right. It's not going to do what they want. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait. So you're looking over your shoulder, right? Until they tell me to do something. Yeah. And that's not good. That's not good. And that, that's not how you move, move ahead on the team at all. Mm -hmm. And that's what you said earlier was give the why and allow them to run. 
But if you're not, and, and I think if you if you don't micromanage, you give them the why, you let them run, you just come in and check. It's that whole uh, it, it inspect what you expect. But the, the micromanagement, I think if somebody's wondering, <clears throat> well, when do you micromanage? And we've said this before, the dichotomy, the balance is, if you've asked somebody to do something over and over and over and over again and they continue to do the same thing and they don't bring success or they keep screwing up, that's when you, I think, personally, I might command right. and say, hey, what time are you clocking in? How about we just say we walk a little closer to them? Yeah. You know, I think I think in that is, you know, if I'm giving you something yeah. and I'm saying, hey, I trust you and run, if you're not, let's say you're not really doing your job and not being mm-hmm. successful in the task, well, then I think my job as a leader is to say, okay, let me come beside you and let me help you walk through, like, what is your thought process? Exactly. What is yeah. my thought process? Mm-hmm. Let's help you take the next step. And once they take the next step, because somewhere in there, there's probably some kind of fear or some kind yeah. of why, or they probably have lack of trust of leaders for something that's happened before. Sure. And it, it may just be that they're the wrong, the wrong person in the wrong in seat. The wrong seat yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And, but as a that. leader, you gotta own that and go, hey, let me. Yeah. Uh, let's, let, let's, let's figure it out. So, yeah. uh, trust killers, lack of communication, micromanagement, and then this next one, we just said it, uh, lack of ownership. Yeah. So when I work for a leader, and here's what's funny, and I know I'm guilty of this. So. Um, not everybody's heard of Jocko, um, which is crazy. Not so, if they haven't heard of Jocko, <laughs> listening to this podcast. podcast. Right now. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, met a guy, I met a guy Saturday that was in the in the army. He was an Air Force pilot or a hey, army, and he was a, he was also a pilot, and he never heard of Jocko. He was in the he was in the army for seventeen years. I was like, how do you not know who Jocko Willink is? But <clears throat> there's people out there that don't know. But I do. I will say I'm guilty of <clears throat> overbearing the ownership part of it when. It comes natural now to go, when I hear somebody complain and they go, hey, that's not my job, that's management's job. I'm like, oh, okay, hold up. And internally, I go and we go, why aren't you owning this? They've never heard of ownership. Mm-hmm. So there's still people that don't know what ownership is, but when it comes to a leader and lack of ownership, if the team isn't performing, if the team has trust issues, whatever it is, it starts at the top. And, that, and if that team leader does not have, or that team leader, that team lead doesn't have ownership, then we're in trouble because um, lack of ownership means everybody's pointing the finger at someone else. And nothing ever really gets taken care of. Yeah, you, I think, yeah, it's a dog chasing his tail, mm-hmm. right? You just keep going back to that same thing. And if you don't, you move past it, and then the same thing happens in a different project. Uh, this person I put <laughs> will throw you under the bus at first chance. Um, nothing is their fault, and they see the I in every situation and never the we in the situation. Yeah. So, wow. Lack of ownership. Um, well, how would you explain ownership if you're if, no, if they've never heard of Jocko? If this is their first time listening, how would you explain? You, if you're, you're yeah, how would yeah, you? Yeah, well, I mean, ownership? I think it's I mean, I think it's that's like how do you explain it without using the word ownership in the definition? But I think it, it really is saying like this is my responsibility, and I have everything that I need, and if I don't have what I need, I'm gonna go figure it out. I'm gonna go find what I need, and I'm yep. gonna make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't think that that means, I know that it, it doesn't mean that you don't ever go to your leader and ask a question. It doesn't mean that you don't ask for help. It doesn't mean that you don't you know, do those things. It just means that you are taking sole responsibility for making that happen, whatever that looks like. Yeah. And when something happens that's bad or wrong, yeah. you just say like, yeah, I, I messed up. Whether it was I didn't give somebody the right direction, I didn't set them up for success. That's kind yeah. of one of the things we say a lot. I, it was my fault, yeah. you know. And That's what next we look time, for, right? yeah. Next time, I'll do something different. Yeah, I think what's funny now is when you look for ownership, and that whether you're in a setting, in a team setting, a school setting, a relationship setting, well, I think for me, it's like an alarm that goes off when someone goes, "Hey, that was my fault," and I'm going, "Wow." Well, I also think it's the opposite on. when somebody says, <laughs> "Like, you know, well, yes, I, did, I didn't yes. know what to do," and you're like, "Yes, you did know yeah. what to do." It's yeah. like the opposite when they yes. don't take any ownership. Yeah. Like the, you're like, oh, uh, uh-uh. so, no, sir. An example of this is I'm going to tell everybody right now. If you don't have the right communication given to you, again, that can be a complaint. That'd be an awesome complaint. But here's what I'm saying: is Have you done everything under the sun to go and find that communication? Is there a calendar? Is there? Are there some notes? Yes. Who can you ask? Don't yes. come to a meeting and go, hey. I oh, I don't know. know. Nobody that. told me. Yeah. Oh no, my no gosh. Fun. No. Yeah. Especially the team up to fail. Right. Well, and then, like like you were saying, take ownership to say, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the seven different documents, calendars, <laughs> whatever it is that I need to to get all of the information to make this possible. Don't wait for somebody to come tell you to do something. Yeah. Totally right. 
So I might have had, might be on the soapbox right there. <laughs> yeah, trust killers, lack of communication, micromanagement, lack of ownership, bait and yeah, switch. Yeah, let's talk about this bait and switch thing you got going on. Me? Yeah. These are our notes. They're not I mean, my notes. Well, I, I'm like, well, tell me about this. This is not something that I would have written down. I just, I just know that <clears throat> some of the people I've, I've worked with, talked to recently, hey, you, you gave me this, this job to come and do this, and I wasn't given the opportunity to perform or a chance to do what I was supposed to do. Okay. And now you're putting me in a different seat on the bus. Or, hey, this is the seat that I was told, and now I'm in a different seat. And I can't succeed in this area because I wasn't built for this. That this is what I was hired for. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not built okay. for it, you can adjust and take ownership. Yeah. However, if it's completely outside of the box. Do you let that person go? You ask them what they want. If you're I, a good leader. Yeah, I think what them. happens is we put the, we try to move people around. We, and it is, I totally, I get the whole bait and switch. Mm -hmm. But we think that we're doing them a favor. Was, you know, there, was there a conversation as well? Yeah, yeah, as a leader. Yeah. You know, we think, oh, we're doing them a favor. We'll just move mm -hmm. them over here. We, we, you know, we like them as a person. Let's keep them around. Yeah. But they're not built for that. Yeah. And we've said that. You're not setting them up for success. Yeah, and I think if you start to see a person slamming their head through the wall because they can't succeed, they don't know how to succeed in a situation, you need to help them as a leader. Mm -hmm. Don't set them up for failure. Yes. But bait and switch, that's what I meant. And even in a relationship saying, hey, I'm going to be friends with this person because I'm Again, manipulation, I want something out of it, and then I'm gonna switch on them, or hey, I'm trying to get to them so I can get to something else. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's a, there's ulterior motive that's not positive. Yeah, so you talked about how like it's not a lack of vision or strategy. It's just a way that somebody's trying to get what they want. Mm -hmm. manipulation. manipulation. I think, uh, well, under bait and switch, I didn't realize this mm -hmm. is what I have. This is manipulation at its finest. The person can see the big picture because they know what they want in the end, so it's not lack of vision or strategy. It's the person who wants to get what they want. So when someone says, well, I didn't know I was doing that. No, you saw the big picture because you're switching things on me. Yeah. And I, I saw this a lot in the corporate world, but if there was a conversation going, hey, Jason, we'd like to move you to this store at some point, yeah. is that something you want? No. Okay, well, for me, in the, the world that I'm in now, we tell that person, if they say no, and they're the next one up, well, guess what? I'm sorry. We're not going to, this isn't a surprise. You're going to move to the third line, and the third person moved to second because they know that they want to move here. So you, you don't demote them, we keep them the same pay, but what we do is we give someone else the opportunity. Next man up is what we say. So, but if I don't tell that person that I want them to move to a different place, being second in command, then they don't know, and all of a sudden you come in and go, hey, you need to relocate this month. What do you mean? Yeah, when you took this position, we, to we, we told you, you never told me anything like that. Well, well now we're telling you, that's, that's wrong to me. As a leader, you don't build trust that way. For sure. So, and the whole thing, mean what you say and say what you mean. So. But I also think from the, the opposite, if somebody comes on, you know, to staff and they're working and they're like, this is what I want. And then I think that it's real easy for like their ego to kind of get in there. And so they start, they kind of, they almost start manipulating the situation in the opposite way, like yeah. to, to empower themselves and to move themselves up. Yeah. But it's really not what's best for the organization. Yeah. So that's good. Because you know, I've said this though, listen, is the whole thing is if I'm that person, your intentions can be smelled from a mile away, yes. whether they're good or bad. Because yes. when that person walks the room, you and I know, and everyone here is sitting everyone here, knows. when someone walks through the door and you go, oh crap, keep your mouth shut because they're, they're in it for themselves. They're not in it for the organization, they're, they're in it for themselves. So if you're listening to this right now and that's you, I would try to work on lowering the ego yeah well and Get i think well and i think i mean trust goes both ways yeah, i think a lot we're, totally. we talk about it a lot from like a leader standpoint mm -hmm. but also like a, like your team trusting you as a leader but it's easy for a leader not to trust their team yep because of things like this totally so those are trust killers yeah let's do trust builders <laughs> it's basically <laughs> the, the, the opposite so if you've been listening the first one was lack of communication so if i'm going to be a leader or a teammate, or a team member, or a spouse, or a boyfriend or girlfriend, and you want to build trust, communicate. What I'm gonna say, communicate authentic and vulnerable and vulnerable. Like be like say what it is. If you don't know the answer, say you don't know oh, the answer. Yeah. And that's what Jocko's video was about. Like don't pretend like you know everything. You know exactly. That's what he, what he said. You don't know. Everything. You don't. So you quit acting like you know everything. everything. Yes. And when you act like you know everything, yeah. 
then you're, it doesn't give your team a chance to rise up and say like, hey, like I might know something about this. You know, yeah. it builds their confidence when you're like, I don't know, I don't, I can't tell you the answers yeah. for all of this. So I can, I can give you the vision and the direction that we're going to go in, but I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to empower and equip you. Yeah. So if you're that person that is excellent at communicating to me, yes. you're also vulnerable, right? Yes, and I think that's where that comes from. Like. I don't know what this is gonna look like. You know, I just, this is where we're gonna go. I don't know how long it's gonna take us. I don't know what it's gonna look like, but I know that we can do it. I know that we have what it takes as a team to make this happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, but I don't know, I don't know how. Yeah. And I think that that's okay. Yeah, I think whether you're a leader or even if a boss comes up to you and says, hey, I need you to do this, it is okay for you to go, hey, can you give me a little direction because I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. It's like when Michael, uh, not Michael Scott. Okay, I was like, um, here we go with an office uh, reference. <laughs> what's Charles? Charles comes to the gym and said, hey, can you give me that, that rundown? <laughs> and he goes, sure, champ. And so he starts working. It. He starts asking everybody, what's a rundown? If he would have just stopped and went and asked, what's a rundown? He, the whole day, eight, nine to five, whatever, he was there. He kept asking people, what's a rundown? What's a rundown? And then he faked whatever he did, and it wasn't good. So communicate on both just sides ask. to go up and down the chain of command. Communicate, just communicate, communicate. Yes. Yes, just ask. Second part. Empower others. We went over this last yes, week. Yes, a lot. So if you're going to build trust, you need to go listen to episode 71. Yes. But empower <laughs> others, meaning what is it that they're passionate about? What is it that they they came, they came, show up for? What is it that, that keeps them up at night, wakes them up early to go, this is what I want to pursue? And if you don't know that about your team, then... Call in made for more and we can help you discover yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because this this week we were meeting with a client and I said, um, "Hey, what is what is so and so enjoy doing?" And they're like, "He he enjoys doing tattoos." And I was like, "Okay, well, what does she do?" And they they go, "Well, she's a cashier, but she really wants to be a bartender in three or four years." I'm going, "Okay, that's what we're talking about. They work for you. Their end goal is not even at their position, but they're there to get the jump start and be around that group of people to go. These people build me up, and they're going to get me where I want to be, even if it's not with this organization." So do you know your team? And when you know your team, you empower them to go do what they, what they want to do. And you have, you're a part of something greater in their life than anyone else because you can empower them. It's like a teacher and a coach right there. So he says right. yes. How long has Darren been a coach? 25 years. Yeah, 25 years. Dang. There's a lot of empowering. Mm -hmm. I bet. Over the we years. could also do a whole podcast on like the old coaching style and the new coaching style. Yeah. Because I think the old coaching style was like they just yelled at everybody and they were like well, hate, like demeaning yeah. and now I think now they've kind of learned it, it's different you know it is more about we'll talk about like making the relationship with the kids yeah. you know that's the primary do they still yell I'm sure they do but yeah, the primary is the relationship see but I I like the relationship with my me and my football coach mm -hmm. but I wanted him to get in my face and go let's go let's because he cared about you and he saw more in yeah. you yeah not you know not because he was just being a jerk yeah. And True. It, you know, yeah. it was he you and you knew that about him. Yes. Yeah. So empower others. Yes. Trust builder number two. Number three. Take ownership. Teach ownership. I think the fact that you said here to teach ownership is huge. Yeah. Because I think that is something that we talk about. You notice it on your team when somebody's not taking ownership. When somebody there's yeah. always, it's always somebody else's fault. You know, yeah. um, why you, why you didn't have what you needed or. All of those things. So, but I think teaching it and having that be part of your culture is imperative. So what happens, do you think, when it becomes a part of a culture that is, didn't know it? What do you think happens to those employees? I, well, I think it's a game changer because I think everybody on the team feels safer and more, like, I feel like I can accomplish more and I can do more yeah. if I'm, you know, in my lane if I believe that everybody on the team is going to do everything that they can do as well. Yeah. And if they don't? They're going to be gone. They're going to work themselves out. And the reason I ask you is because one of our clients, again, we started teaching ownership, ownership well, with their <laughs> owners, and it started being passed down. And I'll never forget walking into one of our clients' uh, offices or whatever, and I go, hey, do you mind changing that for us? And she goes, that's not my job. Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. So I went to the next person, <clears throat> and she goes, Owner, that that's that's management's job. That's not mine. I was like, okay, and so now that they got new management and they're going, those two girls were the first ones to quit because they knew the tide was changing and that we were heading in a positive direction. And they quit because they knew that we were gonna call, we, we're gonna call it to the table and say, hey, who did this? And and it's not about being 
right and wrong. It's about going who, who, who placed this gap for our team not to succeed. But then when it becomes positive, you start to go, hey, take ownership in this, and and you you, you build tr- again. It builds trust knowing that when we come to a, a, a difficult meeting, someone's right. going to go, hey, it was me. So I think that in that like uh, example that you just gave, how you talked about how when people say that's not my job, like, that's not my job. Don't say that. that. Is- but I know that's your that's that right. like part of like pet feeling that's like not my job. Yeah. But I do think that one there's a couple of things that you can say about that is if it's not your job, mm-hmm. it is okay for you to communicate that to yeah. say yeah. like I'm happy to do this for you. And but what it does is it makes you realize where the gaps are. Yeah. And so if somebody's asking you to do something that's not your job, yeah. you have to, you have, that's when you have to reevaluate your system. Yeah. What's wrong with the system? Why, yeah. where's the breakdown yeah. in this? So I think it's, it's a, a symptom of a bigger issue. Yeah, yeah you're right. And, and, and it's okay to, to question that, Yeah. but it's all how you say it. Like, hey, yeah. it's not my job. Well, I, I, hey, I, did I miss something? I will that, do this for you. Dated? But technically, yeah. it's so it's so and so's yeah. responsibility. But yeah. I can make that happen for you, or yeah. I can get the. I always say I'll get the right person to do it. That's that's what I always. Were you were you there when when uh, I played the whole Jocko Extreme Ownership yes. on our mm-hmm. yeah. on our staff day? Our staff day, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that was like that was the first time we were <laughs> staff done. fun day. We're watching <laughs> Jocko video. <laughs> it's called development day. Like if something's called development day, I would hope and, that we didn't just have fun. Right, and we built, we made, can- we did teamwork. We built candy. Things. That's my yeah. kind of fun yeah. day. But yeah, I taught that. I'm sure we went to eat that. at Pluckers or something after. Uh, I can't remember where we went to eat. But I, I, I showed that because I wanted the culture to see that when we all sit around the table, and you start passing the buck to someone. I mean, it's it's for me, it's 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 humorous now because when someone. Uh-huh. You can tell when somebody's right on the verge of going, that's not my job, but they don't want to say it because you right. know you're going to be called to it. Right. Instead, you just yell, you're micromanaging me and you yeah. need to stop. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Anyways, so if you're going to be someone who's building trust, man, take ownership, but teach it. And then the last one, I, I mean, and we'll, we'll talk about how to build trust, like actually how to practically build trust. But the last one I put is just do what's right. Yes. As a leader, do, do what right. is right. Meaning treat people right. Don't freaking manipulate the system use influence well, and as an employee or a team member do what is right oh yeah because i i have seen so Both many ways. times yes. i feel like that teams will get in that um not really setting each other up to fail but kind of like you can see the ball is about to I'm drop not helping you. i'm just gonna let it yeah, fall exactly I, because yes. you know i'm just gonna let it fall yes goodness yes. gracious yeah. that doesn't make any of us better yeah. and it only slows us down yeah, I, w- I was walking with somebody uh yesterday and um, just set up, you know, somebody left some things behind and the person that showed up had to clean it up. And we, like, what you do is you call them to that and go, hey, who left this out? Because this is not setting us up for success. success. Yeah. So yep. um, trust is, it, it's, a, it's, it's, what's interesting about trust is it takes work daily and you're not going to see the result of it until later. And that's one of those things where you go, strategically you're going to see it later tactically it's built every single day so well and i think that we're about to talk about how how do i build trust and i think one of the ways that kind of goes back with we talked a lot about communication which i'm sure we're going to talk about this in just a minute Maybe. is um yeah. don't be afraid to have those hard conversations because yeah. when things like that happen mm-hmm. it's easy just to be frustrated and blame someone because they didn't pick up their stuff or whatever it is yeah. Instead of going back and saying like, hey man, when you do this, this is what happens. Yeah. This is the gap that it creates. This is what it does to the rest of the team. Yeah. You know, but, but we don't, most people don't want to have those conversations. They'd rather when, just complain about it. Yeah, I know when I, when I would complain and do what you just said, it's because my schedule was full and I didn't want to have those freaking conversations. Mm-hmm. But what I realized was it was shooting myself in the foot going, I don't care how busy I am and what else is on my to-do list, I need to stop right now. And I can let this person know that, hey, I've had to push things back in my schedule because of this conversation. So how do we stop having this conversation about you not doing crap laying around? Well, and it's one of those things that, you know, you handling it may take care of the problem, but it doesn't move your team forward. But having those hard conversations, that's what pushes the whole team forward. Tact, tact, remember, tact. Oh yeah, I'm so so much better in that now. Yeah. If y'all haven't heard from one of my first conversations with Adina, or uh, I don't even know if it was a difficult conversation. I just said you're. Yeah. What did I say, you guys? Like, yeah, you, you might even get a new tag oh, yeah, or you, something. You yeah, I was like, yeah. well, okay. 
Um, so you need to work on. I probably still have the text message where he said you need to work on something. That. Yeah. So how do I build trust? If we're listening tonight, uh, one of the things that we want to do is give you a few ways to practically how do I build trust. Uh, number one. Yes. When a decision is made, ask yourself who needs to know this. And I, I think that anytime you leave a anytime you leave a meeting, we always say that you know who needs to know what we just talked about yeah. and what are the next steps. Yeah. And it, if you don't say that out loud, at least the leader of the meeting say it in your mind. Yeah, but or have sure. a person in have, the yes. meeting that, hey, you're the, who yes. needs to know this person. who needs to know this. And so Absolutely. when they walk out of there, that person's going to go tell the rest of the team. Um, does the, uh, in, in, in that, when a decision's made, decision is made, does the team understand why that decision was made? Please don't be the leader that just says, what I say goes, so don't ask any questions. I want to understand why, so that I can get behind that even more. Yeah, well, and even Does I think, that make sense? Though? Yes, because also I see one thing with a leader is sometimes they, um, like, orchestrate the conversation where... You can it, use the word manipulate. It doesn't leave time. It, like, they don't, they don't want you to ask questions. Yeah. They don't want to do the questions. Mm -hmm. And I think that creates, um, like, yeah. un confusion. unsettlingness, mm -hmm. you know, confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are people that take longer to process things. And you should know those people on your team. Some people on my team... That you can tell them something and they're they're good to go. Uh, yeah. Several of them, they need a lot of time, yeah. and they need to go through every <laughs> single yeah. situation that possibly might could ever happen. So one of my our friends, and I love that he <laughs> admits okay. this. He admits this up front. Like he would admit this up front in a meeting. I love what John Bang Bang says. He'll say, "Hey, I need some time to process this." But if you ask him on the spot. He just starts firing everything that's going through his and head. Then he do, and he just yeah, talks and in, he circles in circles because but, he's trying to process it. And then, But that's why you're saying know your people know because your people. when John's processing this, everybody's going, where did he get that from? Where did he get that from? <laughs> but we're realizing he's saying it out loud while other people are going, oh, okay, that's not what he means or that's what he means. And yes. so John's really good about going, just so you guys know, it takes a while for me to process this. And yes, so, yes uh, it does. Yeah, there's people that can process it quick and people that can't. But when the decision is made, ask yourself who needs to know yes. and how you can tell them. Yes, and share the why. Yep, and that's one is, when, how do I build trust? When something is your call and doesn't go as planned, just please take ownership. Yes. It, even if you're not the, if you're the owner or business owner yes. or you're the manager and one of your teammates or one of your employees makes a, a wrong call, take ownership for it. Good heavens. And I have seen you do this in meetings when you'll be like, uh, you know, you'll like, I'll take ownership. It's totally my fault. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not your fault at all. That's all these other things that happen, you know. But in the moment, it's the right thing to do, you know. It, it is. Yeah. It is the right thing to do in the moment. And knowing enough about your leadership style, I know that you then go and just have those conversations yeah. with those people about yeah. why it broke down and what happened, yeah. you know. But in that meeting, it's a much more effective way to just say, my bad. I, yeah. I you know, I didn't yeah. do this right. And yeah, because to on. me, if I, and I'll tell you, going into those meetings, I've been in a room with four high high capacity leaders, and I've had employees below me who were I was their supervisor, and they made the calls, right? I mean, Etienne was one of them, and then two other college or middle aged, twenty age year old what? kids, whatever they're called. Um, so uh, I don't want to call. I don't want to say their names. Yeah, no names. But names. they were they were on that team. So I'm in a room with four high high capacity leaders, and they're going, "Hey, this this wasn't done." And I, instead of putting someone else on the bus, mm -hmm. you do that to me. Like mm -hmm. I'm their leader, mm -hmm. so call me out, not them. Yep. But yep. then when I go to a meeting, they already knew it was coming going, dang it, I, I forgot, or hey, I didn't know. And I'm like, well, then let's clear it up because yeah. um, I would rather be the, the, the boss or the mm -hmm. supervisor that takes it from me. Because even, if, and then whenever something really goes well, you give them the ownership and say, hey, you know what, Etienne did a really good job. So-and-so did a really good job, and that's what they do. So, well, I think the ownership. other part of that too is like, a lot of the times you would know that you're gonna like get talked to about yeah I, I, would gonna, I would take I would you take you first Tiana, I know in that situation yeah. she was really good about saying hey I'm gonna before you go into this meeting yeah. I'm gonna let you know I did not do something I was supposed to do and I created this gap I'm yeah. apologizing I'm owning it but I know that you were gonna get called out for it I and so you a heads up. I'm just letting you know yeah yeah that was I mean to and that's me, so that helpful. helpful to me because there was uh, someone else on the team that I mean that wouldn't do that yes and I would always go man what are you going to do to change this? Because I'm getting, going to these meetings, I'm getting blindsided, and I'm taking ownership. So now I'm going to have to micromanage you 
Yeah, because you're not showing up. Well, and that built trust between like you and Antiana yes. because even though she wasn't do she, not she wasn't doing her job in that situation, she didn't do what she so was supposed gap. to. Yeah. It was a gap. Yeah. You know, but the fact that she would come and communicate yeah. made all the difference. So when we say it builds team teamwork and team team mm -hmm. uh, mentality, if Etiana, if one of the other persons took ownership, and then the third one did, Etiana and that other person were like, "Bro, what are you doing? Like, you're you're killing our team." because you're not following through. You have to take ownership of this stuff. So it builds unity and it weeds out the people that don't want to take ownership. So, yeah. but as a leader and owner, you can't take ownership or you can, you, you need to take ownership, but don't use the words and, if, or but, like, or <laughs> however. Like, hey, uh, something went wrong, however, it yeah. wasn't my fault because, yeah, no. or hey, it rained, or hey, no, take yeah. ownership and just say, hey, we didn't plan for a contingency plan, so it's my fault. Yes. Yeah, so, please stop with the butts. A, a team will rally behind a leader who can admit his or her faults and uh, and where they want to go from there. So, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. How do I build trust? Number three. Do not overcommit. Can you explain that? Wow. <laughs> a delayed commitment. <laughs> delayed commitment until you check your count cal calendar and availability. Have you ever done that? Any of y'all in here where you commit to something? And realize you didn't have something else on that. I have the opposite problem though. I, I, I turn everything down. I say no to everything. I'm like, nope, not doing that. Nope, that not doing that. Trust. Well, but you know what? It's called, it's called yeah. boundaries. <laughs> you know? I mean, but even, I'm like, even at work, I'm like. Hey, Dina, can we record the podcast tonight? No, I'm going to go get my pajamas. And just chill at 3 o'clock. I don't care. I'm just kidding. But, but I think even at work, I, I am like, they're like, I mean, we can ask her. I mean, I will never forget the time that my boss came and said, um, I told them they could ask you, but I wasn't sure what you would say. And I was like, well, first of all, if they ask me, I should say yes, because yeah. I'm your employee. Mm -hmm. But they know I'm not going to do something just to do something. Yeah. No. Not That's, that doesn't build trust. But what I'm saying, yeah. anybody else in here, have, have you yes. ever been approached by someone and said, hey, can y'all get together on Thursday or Friday? And you go, yeah. Don't have any. Or I'm you don't check. Like you don't check. Months, don't have a leg over yeah, now. and then you have to say, um, hey, guys, I know we said we were going to do that. We were going to record on Wednesday, but yes. actually I didn't check my calendar. That was me this week. <laughs> <laughs> my, daughter, my, daughter a, my daughter had a concert, and I was like, and, and you know what? I and here's, here's an example of some, somebody saying, but she had a concert. And they only freaking perform two songs, and that's it. I'm like, well, that's okay. You still you need to be there for those two songs, three okay, songs. Three it songs. doesn't matter. My, uh, it doesn't matter if she. Brother-in-law was notorious for that. For Andy, over overcommitting. Oh, overcommitting. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we'll get oh, to that. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll do that. Casey, Casey oh. was. Yeah. Cause, Cause, yeah, and then all of a sudden he'd be rounding up guys up. Hey, I said I'd do this. You okay. guys can think you can show up. Yeah, we will. Yeah. But and, and again, but his was out of he had a big heart. heart. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm saying though, as a leader, don't overcommit because just check your check your well, calendar because right. it creates this not distrust, but people begin to go. Creep this person has no idea what well, they're talking about. Well, it's even worse because what I see happens is people on the team they will say that they can do something mm -hmm. and then they don't do it, yes. and so then it comes down to it, and you're like, you you said you would do this and you yes. didn't do it. They're like, oh, well, I just didn't get to it. Or oh my gosh. So here's a trigger for me. Trigger. Like, singer, sip singer. Seriously, <laughs> a trigger. For me is as a kid when I'd go visit my grandparents in Van Horn or my grandmother's because I didn't have grandpa but grandmothers I would wait for my cousins I probably shouldn't say this no it's too late now son of a gun um, I would wait <coughs> for one of them that would say hey uh, I'm gonna come pick you up because we're gonna go play baseball or play catch right. or whatever and seriously it, it at 5 o'clock I'll come pick you up at 5 15 5 30 Seven thirty rolling around, and I'm still. And we didn't have cell phones, so we'd call on the you're just, phone, you're just and they would the answer. Turn. Yeah, and I was sitting there going, "This sucks." And so that happened so many times in the summer that I was like, "Screw this! I never want to do that." So when someone tells me they're going to do something, and they don't, man, that I have to detach and go, "This isn't a replay of what happened in my life." Yeah. But it doesn't do well to build trust with somebody. Um, so. Yes. Do what you say you're going to do. Period. I apologize yes. to my family, but. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> Influence, not manipulation. This is a big one. I love build the team, not your agenda. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Do not, if you're the leader, don't ever put yourself in front of your teams. Uh, why? Because if you do, again, it's going to show your intentions can be smelt from a mile away. As a leader, as a person, anyone in a relationship, as a parent, again, as a parent, right? I want you to clean your room so we can go do something or we get ice cream. Well, you're the one that wants freaking ice cream. They don't. So, I 
maybe that's a bad example because I'm always with my kids <laughs> eating ice cream. But don't manipulate. That's all yeah. life is. Life can be narrowed down to manipulation or influence. Is it about you or is it about them? And if you can be honest and say, hey, I really, I really need to get this done, so can you, can you do this for me? Be honest about it. There's but, like subtle you know, manipulations. Like, hey, when you're done cleaning your room, we can't go get yeah. ice cream. Yeah, That's but, acceptable. And, and it sucks, though, whenever it's in a business because you don't want to be in a mistrust relationship with your boss or team because it begins the rumblings of, what do they want out of me? Or hey, mm -hmm. it's again, what do we say if your boss called right now and he, oh. if his name came up on there? How do you feel when, your boss, you feel calls when your boss you... calls? Is it manipulation or influence? Like right off the bat? Influence. Okay, that's good because yeah. that's a good. Depending on which boss, I've got several people bumping around. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jamie? My boss called influence. Influence. Okay, good relationships. I'll stop with that, Tiana. Yeah, influence. Cool. Why though? Because um, we build trust with each other, we have relationships. That's good. That's real good. I've, I've, I've never sat in a room with so many people who are like, when their boss calls, they're like, oh, hey, let's answer the phone. I'm like, oh, gosh. I know. Oh, they're <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing? It's so always fun. fun. I know. I'm, have you ever? I'm like, have somebody ever, has died. Yeah, or it. like, that's like, it. What it do they need? Like, what do they need? So, yeah, it's not just a like, yeah. hey, what are you doing? Yeah. So what, um, have any of you ever let your your phone just go to voicemail when your boss calls and you're not busy? Before, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, how I did with me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways, but again, manipulation or influence, it's always going to go down to that. Um, and then the last thing, if you're, how do I build trust as a leader? Here's one of the most practical ways. Let go of control. Yes. You let can. go of control. Yes. Control. And you know what? It may not get done the way you want it to get done, and I fully believe that nine times out of ten, it will be better. I yeah. really do. No, I do. I really, Even really if it's do. Not, you still and stuff. it might be messy, and it might go sideways yeah. a couple of different times. Yeah. But what your team gets out of it, the their own growth, their confidence, like all all of that together. Yes. As long as you are continuing to give the mission and the vision, and they are holding tight to the vision <laughs> mm -hmm. of the organization or the project, let it be. Yeah. Yeah. I let agree. it be. Because again, strategically, you're going to win because someone else is doing things for you. Tactically, if you say, no, oh, this is the way I want it, I want it done this way. You're Again, you're micromanaging, you're doing a disservice to the team. And the reason I put a quarterback example here is because when you let go of control, the quarterback doesn't run the ball every time. The quarterback's job is to get the ball into people's hands that can make the play happen. So when someone says quarterback's the leader, everyone knows that there's bad quarterbacks when they try to do too much, specifically in college and in high school, when they try to be the one on the team with the big name and the one trying to get to a college because they have a great arm. But if you can't get that ball in the hand of the running back or the, the wide receiver or whatever it is, you're in trouble. So you're trying to call the shots. Now get the ball in the hands of the best person that can make it happen and let them run. Let them do it. Well, and that, I think that's a great example, even though I'm on a big sports you know, analogy person. But I think the thing about I've learned about like in that, yeah. everybody knows what the goal is. The goal yep. is to move the ball down the field. Ultimately, yep. you'll want to score, yep. but you exactly. want to move the ball down yep. the field. And you may call a play and tell your quarterback what to do. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen it where the quarterback in the moment is like something else happened yeah. and I'm going to have to make, I'm going to call an audible. I'm going to yeah. do something I didn't think I was going to do. No one audible is. Yeah. That's good. Why well, I, I came right to a football yeah. coach, <laughs> yeah. but I think I think that Force that color. I think that no, <laughs> I think that's what is really important is, as a leader yeah. is that they trust your team. They yeah. know what the end goal is. They yeah. know they just need to move the ball down the field. It doesn't matter if, if you're you could do the head coach and offensive coordinator. You know, like. It may look different, yeah. but the goal is to win the game. Exactly. And in, in basketball, if you go to a different sport, in basketball, when they have the hot hand, whoever has a hot hand, maybe somebody off the bench, meaning this person just drains a three-pointer, and then they go, hey, give it back to him, another three-pointer, and another three-pointer. Why would you give it to somebody that doesn't shoot and go, hey, he is on tonight. Like, give him the ball or her the ball mm -hmm. because they're really good. You don't try to take that away and go, well, I'm going to try to make it my show now. Yeah. No. Let them have the freaking ball. Let them win the game. Yes, so, the goal is to win the game. Yeah. So trust. Trust is a, 
again, one of the biggest issues on teams. Well, and I'm going to say, as a leader, if you were kind of looking at your team and you're thinking, huh, our team might have some trust issues, <clears throat> um, it starts at the top. Sheesh, and, yeah. you know, and I think it's just one of those things that if you really want to grow your team, you really have to say, you know, what am I doing, which we've said time and time again, what inside of me am I doing that's holding my team back? Yeah, you got to look at yourself. That's yep. tough. Not too many mm-hmm. leaders will, will do that. Look in the mirror. Yep. Take ownership. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's trust. That's it. If you guys have any, um, like, I guess examples or any questions about trust, you can email us. Yes, info. please do. We need people, we need some, uh, some Q&A questions. Info at madeformoreconsulting.com. I will say that we got some good feedback from uh, one of our listeners that said they enjoyed uh, Stephanie's little one Q&A. Minute. One I minute. I don't know what Five minute yeah. Q&A. Yeah. And then that same person uh, texted me this morning, and this is a quote. Is the lowdown a thing, or are we over that now? <laughs> End quote. That's exactly what that person said. That's why you can't, so start, you can't is, start something know, if you're I, not consistent with it. I said something it. that I did not follow through on, and they called me out. And, Good and job. So that was at 6.12 a.m. this morning, and I have not responded to him. Just from the time of yes. the day that he yes. texted you. Every morning, my wife would be like, hey, I heard your phone go off this morning. <laughs> Same person all the time. Same person. So, um, but anyways, yeah, I think trust and empowerment these last two weeks are uh, key to building a team, key to leaders and um, maybe adding that to their tool belt. So uh, I know we're a few weeks out, four weeks out, but make sure you go get the... Leading with leading from within 2.0, John leading, Maxwell. Yeah, leading from within 2.0. Uh, don't get just regular leading from nope. within because you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, so do that for us. Go f- you, Etienne. Follow us on socials. Yeah, please follow us on our socials. Socials, I can't talk. I need Uh, Etienne to like make me a a cheat sheet. (laughs) So I know what to say. Follow us on our socials. Uh, Rate us if you listen to us. Five stars. Yes, five stars. It's not hard. Spotify, um, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast, please uh, rate us. Uh, Facebook has not gotten rid of the uh, podcast. It's in a month. Okay, so. If you listen on Facebook, they're going to go away. Facebook kind of sucked it up with podcasts. So let, them, let the people that do podcasts the best do podcasts. So, um, But yeah, uh, rate us, follow us, let us know. Um, I know I told Etiana to start an order on uh, stickers. So we're going to be getting some more stickers. She has some really good ideas for t-shirts. Um, we are just about sold out, I think, of the ones that we have, maybe. Somebody actually bought a shirt this past week. Woohoo! But oh, what's yeah. funny is the person that bought a shirt, we have a free one for her. <laughs> so I shouldn't have said that because she's listening now. Now I'm going to have to Can refund her freaking money. Just send her uh, two. Anyways. Yeah. It's a I would get one free. Get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a BOGO. Now, you know, remember what we said about BOGOs? It doesn't build loyalty. No, it's it just does a way to. No, but, yeah, but you're getting right. her one for somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Okay, like Tiana's telling us, let's move this. Yeah, anyways, we appreciate you guys listening. And remember, you exist for more. We. We're, we <laughs> exist for more. We're here to offer more. Don't ever give up. Every single one of us is made for more. We'll see you guys later. I always forget. YouTube. Bye, YouTube. We'll Bye. see you all next week. And talk to you all later. Peace.